Today on Engineering Newswire, brought to you by Interpower Corporation, the premier supplier for power system components with a one-week manufacturing lead time and over four million parts in stock, we're further developing BAE Systems Railgun, making a bionic eye for the blind, demonstrating robotic apes, and using high-tech toilets. Remember the rail gun? Woo! Yeah, baby! BAE Systems was awarded a $34.5 million contract from the Office of Naval Research for further development of the electromagnetic rail gun under phase two of the Navy's innovative naval prototype program. If you don't remember the rail gun from last year, let's kick a few more cobwebs. Oh, yeah, baby! The EM railgun technology uses high power electromagnetic energy instead of explosive chemical propellants to propel a projectile farther and faster than any gun before. During phase one, engineers at the Naval Surface Warfare Center in Virginia successfully fired a prototype at tactical energy levels. When fully weaponized, it will deliver hypervelocity projectiles at 32 megajoules that can reach 110 nautical miles decimating land, sea, and air targets using kinetic energy rather than with conventional explosives. The focus of phase two is to advance the railgun technology, maturing the launcher and pulsed power from a single shot operation to a multi-shot capability and incorporating auto-loading and thermal management systems. Multi-shot? So... Yeah, baby! Yeah, baby! Oh, yeah, baby! Phase two will begin immediately with initial prototypes to be delivered as soon as 2014. The development will be carried out by BAE Systems in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and by teammates IAP Research in Dayton, Ohio, and SAIC in Marietta, Georgia. It may seem like the plot to squeeze the last viable ounce out of a well-worn franchise, but the German Research Center for Artificial Intelligence has created four-legged, ape-like robots that demonstrate the benefits of actuated multi-point contact feet. The eye-struck demonstrator, that's just a terrible name, features 48-volt robo-drive motors with a 1 to 80 ratio harmonic drive gear, four BLDC Fallhaber 2250 motors, as well as six BLDC Fallhaber 2444 motors. This robot was built to strut on varying space terrain such as Mars or the Moon and also includes a variety of sensors. Traditional multi-legged robots are equipped with single point contact feet for the sake of simplicity in design and control. The eye struck demonstrator, can we just call it Dr. Zayas? Oh, Dr. Zayas. Dr. Zayas will contain an actuated spinal column, which is a six degree of freedom parallel kinematic mechanism that creates a rugged connection between the front and rear body. A single axis load cell is integrated in line of each strut of the spine and the overall structure can be used as a six axis force torque sensor. The Argus II is the first and only bionic eye to be approved in countries throughout the world thus far, including the US. That's right, somebody finally made it past the FDA. This prosthetic seeing device is essentially a pair of glasses. They work by converting video images captured by a miniature camera into a series of small electrical pulses. So, it isn't as good as being a Borg. Well, maybe it is better. Those pulses are transmitted wirelessly to an array of electrodes on the surface of the retina where they stimulate the retina's viable cells resulting in the corresponding perception of patterns of light in the brain. A patient then learns to interpret these visual patterns, thereby regaining some visual function. Kind of like rudimentary sonar. This system is ideal for patients with late stage retinous pigmentosa, which affects nearly 100,000 Americans. University Hospital's Eye Institute will be one of the first medical centers in the United States to offer the Argus II retinal prosthesis system. Here comes a blast from the past. Remember this episode? Why on earth was I blue? The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation wanted to reinvent the toilet, focusing on solutions for the improper disposal of waste to help reduce the transmission of diseases in underdeveloped countries. Now a prototype of this self-contained photovoltaic powder domestic toilet and wastewater treatment system is set to be installed in New Delhi, India later this summer. 
When this particular toilet is flush, the waste travels directly to the lower level of the unit with the help of gravity. The wastewater travels to the septic holding tank. From there, a photovoltaic or solar panel converts the sun's rays into energy that powers an electromechanical reactor which breaks down the waste material into hydrogen gas. The hydrogen gas can then be stored in hydrogen fuel cells to provide a backup energy source. The team also used SolidWorks and SolidWorks flow simulation for academic research to maximize the amount of waste that can be processed in a single day of sunlight. Do you have story ideas? Comment below and we'll cover them in an upcoming episode. For PDND TV, I'm Chris Fox and this has been your Engineering Newswire.